Hi, this is Corinne from the Cut at Home Design team, and I would like to demonstrate how to use the Angel Craft Final in your Silhouette Cameo. So the first thing that I'm going to do is show you how I set it up on my my Silhouette Studio. I'm using the Designer Edition, but I believe that the Standard Edition will be very similar. So the first thing I like to do is go over here and draw a rectangle. So I'm going to select that and I'm drawing out a box or a rectangle the same size as whatever project I'm working on. So whether I'm working on a canvas, a scrapbook page, I design a box or rectangle of the same size. That way I can use that as a guide. So what I'm working on today is the top of my laptop. So I've measured that out and I'm going over here to open up the scale window at the top. I'm going to uncheck the lock aspects box and I'm going to change my settings to the size of my laptop. So I measure that out to be 16 and a quarter by 11. I'm going to select apply and now this gives me a guide to the size object that I'm working with. I'm going up here to fill the color window and I'm going to fill it in with black, which is the color of the laptop and that way I can envision what I'm working on. Next thing I want to do is go over to my library and choose my shape. I will be using the heart drop corner flourish here. So let me double click on that and let me drag that over let me get this out of the way. Let me drag that over and I'm going to fill that with a color as well. So I'll go back up to my color fill window and select a color. You have to make sure you have your design highlighted. And now I will drag that over to my box here. So now I just want to simply drag out the corner to make this larger or smaller. So I'm going to make it about the size that I think would look good. Okay, and once I'm happy with that, I can select my box here, go down to delete and delete that off since we were just using that as reference. Now I want to place this on my mat and go up to the cut settings window up here at the top right. And I want to select vinyl. Once you select vinyl, you can scroll down and it will tell you what your settings should be. It tells you to have your blade at two, your speed at eight, and your thickness at nine. So I do not mess with any of these. The only thing that I do a little bit different is I select my blade to be a number three. I would suggest if you've never used vinyl before, just leave it at two, leave it at the recommended settings, which is two, and see how that works for you. Maybe do a test cut first. Personally, I like it at three. I know that that works great for me. And the other thing that I'd like to notate is I use a separate blade strictly for vinyl. So I have a blade um, in, a, in a box marked vinyl and I pull that out only using that for vinyl and that way your blades will last a very long time and you'll get a great cut. So let me go ahead and take you over to the silhouette and show you how that cuts. I will select here to send a silhouette. Okay, so I'm back and here is my cut on my mat. It's going to be very hard to see on camera. I do use a Cricut mat with mine and as I mentioned, this is from the Trendy Home 2 collection. This is the magenta color and I will have the products linked in the description box. And as I also mentioned, I keep a separate blade for vinyl. So I just label it and I pull this out simply when I'm using it for vinyl. That way I know I get a clean cut each and every time. So now let me just remove this from my mat. This is a very new mat, so it's going to be very sticky. I 
I have a love-hate relationship with brand new mats. I love that they don't slide around, but they are so hard to remove, and I sometimes take the stickiness off of them, but... Okay. So now, the next thing I want to do is cut off any excess vinyl because... Um, I can save that. There's not much on this because I made my design pretty big, but I will still take off any excess vinyl. Okay, so the next thing that I want to do is I'm using the Angel Craft Transfer paper, and to me, this is a must have when using vinyl. So let me first go ahead and weed my vinyl, which means I'm taking off any of the negative parts that I don't need. So I'm going to use my brayer, press this down. I'm just pressing the design onto the backing sheet. I see a little excess vinyl here that I can cut off and save. And if you're using a mat, a cutting mat, which I tend to do, you can use very tiny pieces of vinyl and cut out small words. So I save all the pieces. So now I'm using my Tim Holtz piercer and I'm simply going to take off the excess vinyl before transferring it onto my paper, my transfer paper. So I do this by just slowly peeling it off and you want to try not to set it back down onto the other vinyl because it will stick to it. If you see any pieces that need pulled off, you can help them by using your piercing tool as well. When it gets to be a lot of vinyl like this, I simply cut it off to get this part out of my way, and then I go back to finishing these smaller pieces like this. Okay, so I've taken off all the negative vinyl. And now this is where the transfer paper comes in handy because there would be, all this would rip if you, you tried to do this without it. So I'm just going to kind of measure out how much I need. And cut that off. You can cut with scissors as well. And now I take the top portion of the transfer paper and peel it away from the backing sheet. And when I'm doing a large piece like this, I like to just go start with just the top. So I'm just going to work my way across. And this 12 inch transfer tape comes in handy with this. And now I'm simply going to place this along the top of my design. Press that down and then slowly work my way to the bottom of the design as it releases the paper. I hope you can see there. And again, I'm just slowly working my way down. OK, 
him now I'm going to use my brayer really press that down onto the transfer paper the little bit that sticks to your mat is no problem I'm just going to really press that down And now I am going to just set this aside for one moment. I'm going to bring in my laptop. And I'm going to remove my cutting mat. So the next thing I want to do is make sure that this is is clean. Clean of fingerprints which I can see are on there. So off camera I'm going to use a little bit of Windex and a clean towel and I'm just going to make sure that this is clean and dry. You want to make sure it's dry as well. So now I'm going to turn my laptop because I want the design to be right side up when my laptop is open. So I'm going to put it up in this top corner. So now what I want to do is go ahead and peel this off and if any parts of the vinyl stick to this release sheet you just want to press it back down and really give it a press. And just again do this part slowly. Take your time. See like a little bit stuck right there? It's going to happen on intricate designs. So if that happens press it back down and actually let me turn it this way so maybe you can see okay so this part right here is sticking so I'm just going to press it back down and give it another press all along the design just going slowly okay and now you can see right through your design. Now I'm simply going to place my design and I like to start at one end and work my way down by lightly pressing. Okay, so you just want to do that very slowly, pull it off, and if there's any little air bubbles, you want to go through and just kind of press it down. So isn't that fun? That's all there is to it. I will have a few pictures showing this, how it looks when the laptop is open. If you have any questions, please leave us a comment, and all the product codes will be listed in the description box below. Check out Cut at Home's blog for more information. Thanks for stopping by.